Our lecturer for the day is a gentleman called Justice Nandro. Maybe I'm Jui Ojina, but niko show him najua this uh, his show on YouTube. It's called Shared Moments with Justice. Growing up, I think uh, I didn't have an opportunity to voice my feelings and my opinion. Most of us work with childhood traumas. For you, what was that realization point? If you don't know that you have a problem, it doesn't matter how many people tell you that you have a problem. You can only change what you know. What's the impact you want to achieve with these stories, by sharing these stories? I want to break the silence. There's, there's a human being in everyone. These are stories that I know if shared would really impact other people and also celebrating those who have taken the first step of breaking their own silence. After listening to that many stories, I wouldn't trust human beings. How do you decompress, de-roll? When you're doing these stories, you can't necessarily detach yourself. It's not, it's not easy. Classmates Mkofiti, welcome to another class, another session. Uh, thank you for joining us every single week uh, we wouldn't be here without you guys um, like i keep saying we are here to learn from men and women who've achieved success in their path of life so sit class we are sitting here with our next lecturer and i'm excited today because in today's episode we are talking to a man who does exactly what i do but he has also figured out this youtube thing digital content creation much better than i am started before me so i'm excited to learn and he's a man who's been able to balance and find that strike that balance between content creation and managing and running and marketing his business. And I believe Woki Wapalevio home as a classmate, as a CEO, PIO, I'm sure in his skill at Kakulan. So as usual, we're filming this at Longo Not Place. Come check them out for a staycation, beautiful, amazing space. Luku Pia Kame Mekubali, Bonga na Rajab Karume. Yeah, check him out. Manze, Mwambia Kupigisha Luku ya CEO on a budget. Amazing. All right, our lecturer for the day is a gentleman called Justice Nandro. Maybe I'm Jui Ojina, but niko show najua this, uh, his show on YouTube. It's called Shared Moments with Justice. Ntuyangu, hey. kofiti? Fiti kabisa. Karibu sana kukwetu. Intro imeweza. Intro imeweza. <laughs> Intro imeweza. Nikuwa <laughs> naangaliu na soma wapi. Kwa hii inairobi lazibu ujue kuchocha mtu yangu, lazibu jiskume. But ni legit. Ni legit, shukran sana. Asante. People don't know the face, we know the name. Shared moments with justice. Right. Yeah. Have you actually, I tried looking, have you been interviewed elsewhere, somewhere else? Mara chache sana. Mara chache. Very few times. Very few times. I probably haven't come across it. So this is the first time they're putting a face to the name Justice. Amazing, man. Please introduce yourself and what exactly you do. Mtu yangu jenga CV ya baby. CEOs hapa wanatafuta. Now, first of all, I'm really happy to be here and thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, man. For having me here, hosting me. My name is Justice. Of course, as you said, most people would recognize my brand yeah. as shared moments with justice. Yeah. Uh, but he ni platforming in create 2020. We COVID. didn't have that. COVID baby. <laughs> COVID baby. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. But before before 2020, I was still in production, mm -hmm. uh, in TV production specifically as a TV producer. All right. Doing content. Okay. And in fact, my first story that informed creating the space shared moments with justice, yeah. I did in 2010. Wow. All Back right. in uh, 2010, mm -hmm. I was doing stories uh, in Langata Women's Prison. Okay. So, and one of the stories I did in 2020, or rather 2010, mm -hmm. well, Demo in 2019. Right. She was an inmate back in 2010 when okay. I did her story. Okay. So she reached out in 2020, 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how. <laughs> wow. Yes, yes. Uh, but so she was compelled. She, she just felt like she needed to look for me. Right. So that is when I had my first aha moment. Like okay. maybe I should seriously consider doing follow-up stories on this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, more on how the platform began. Yeah. But uh, basically, I'm a family man. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. um, my first pawn just finished uh, class eight. Okay. Uh, going to high school. Right. My last pawn is six. Hey, but now watch them. <laughs> wait, wait. High school. <laughs> my second pawn is nine. Yes. Aye, bro. <laughs> 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 
Miaka iko. Miaka iko. Ni neema. Ni neema. Wewe 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 wewe. utanionesha Nairobi unatumia maji gari baada ya kuoga bali. Ni ku avoid to stress. Eh kutulia. Kutulia. You know you can't change what you can't change. Absolutely. So you know what? Twendele tu na story because um shared moments with just as very curious like uh I I'm sure we'll come answer but please continue on it. I, I I have been curious where that concept came from. Right. Yeah. So basically I've had a passion to mm-hmm. share people's stories and experiences All right. from way back mm-hmm. because growing up I think uh, I didn't have an opportunity to voice mm-hmm. my feelings and my opinion. Right. Nili grow up, you know, environment nili grow ocha. Okay. Uh, okay. So ni ile place yenye kukisemwa ni hivi ni hivi you don't question yes, you know yes. you just follow mm-hmm. a line mm-hmm. so i grew up in an environment where mm-hmm. i didn't know much mm-hmm. about questioning or even saying no mm-hmm. to something that i have a contrary opinion about right so that i didn't know it was even a problem mm-hmm. until i got exposed later on in life and realized there are yes. people my age mm-hmm. who are more you know outgoing yes. more liberal more easy right. about life yeah, mimi yeah. niko huko nimejifunga kwa kona mm-hmm. yangu mm-hmm. i'm like you know i'm even apologizing for things that i should you know <laughs> I, <laughs> you know oh my so i had that yeah. syndrome yeah. and it bothered me for a while and that's when it hit me that that voice that i didn't have growing up mm-hmm. and i've seen a lot of other people who perhaps can be empowered not to go through that same experience mm-hmm. if i created a space that would allow them or people generally to freely express themselves what they are going through i think i would be living my dream Right. I'd be living my childhood in other people. So that was the inspiration behind creating that space where people can just freely talk about their everyday challenges and life without shame and without you know kujali nani anaskiza nani askizi nani anasema nini. So that was the inspiration. But of course it's one thing to dream and have an inspiration and yeah. another to implement. Yes, so it yes. took quite a long time before I put that thing into what it is today. Wow. And as I said at the beginning, mm-hmm. when I was doing stories even way back in 2010, mm-hmm. just as a young journalist then, mm-hmm. um I think that was at the back of my mind. Subconsciously, mm-hmm. I wanted to do that. Right. But at some point I felt like through the mainstream media was not the best platform for me to be able to have that voice come out as strongly you know your mainstream media kuna a lot of um, you know in house media policy and those yeah. kind of things editorial policy so as much as you want to share this story mm-hmm. there's what the media policy or the in house policy says right. so i felt if i created an alternative space mm-hmm. that would work better for me and mm-hmm. that is when youtube as a platform came and i said this is the space for me mm-hmm. in 2020 mm-hmm. i did my first story wow yes and you're doing so well man i think the last time i checked your channel had about 115,000 subscribers man. Right. that's amazing thank you Bill, yeah yeah <laughs> considering it's a covid baby uh something you touched on um it's important because i struggle with the same thing and i think a lot of people in our generation struggle mm-hmm. with it um that's why we keep seeing all these conversations about the gen z generation yeah. because they are outspoken they speak their mind for us nikani kitumpia it's alien it is because we grew up in a time where we were to be seen not to be heard yeah and ni po me highlight that it actually affects a lot of us without um, knowing and yeah, yeah. W- most of us walk with childhood traumas and mm-hmm. most of it might not necessarily be termed as trauma mm-hmm. but really there are things that have been imprinted yes. on our minds and they inform how we approach life mm-hmm. and what we do on a daily basis without yeah. knowing <clears throat> so unaona tu say ako ag yeah. anafanya vitu in a certain way you can't really explain mm-hmm. and you think you know subconsciously mm-hmm. they are just trying to you know project yeah. what they experienced growing up right. which has not been you know addressed right so it's very important uh, now that i'm actually in the space where i do a lot of stories mm-hmm. that touch on mental health mm-hmm. that it's 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 really important for people to reflect mm-hmm. and uh, just go down memory lane mm-hmm. and find out where they have come from that is true and how or what that might have impacted of yeah. what that journey might have had in terms of impact mm. on who they are today 
so that if there are things that they can probably you know fix yeah <laughs> they start working on it I, i'm i'm trying to think how does even how does someone even get themselves to that point to realize hey yeah wait a minute this is what is affecting me yeah. and i can trace it way back to mm-hmm. to that child because there are things i didn't do i didn't do when i was a child na zina ni affect saizi eh sijui kuna cause kuna kuna moment tunafaa tukae chini ya mti tugongwe na apple imeanguka i think it's the, for you what was that realization point the, realize, the realization point first is to try and look at life from you are on life from outside mm-hmm. just place yourself outside of your life and try to look at yourself from outside mm-hmm. because that then brings in an objectivity that would help you to see you for who you are mm-hmm. and see your flaws and mistakes mm-hmm. otherwise these are things that people point out on everyday basis yeah. but because we are so self-centered mm-hmm. when some someone points out something we are yeah. the first thing is to defend yourself because sure. we we are scared we want sure. to protect you know sure. our identity yeah. and the things that we we value mm-hmm. so f- for 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 most cases when someone else points it out mm-hmm. you you want to you know mm-hmm. but when you look at it from you look at yourself mm-hmm. then it's easier yeah. to really say maybe this thing is not really mm-hmm. but something else that helps people to really come to that realization is exposure you see you can only change what you know mm. if you don't know that you have a problem yeah then it doesn't matter how many people tell you that you have a problem that is you true. can't do nothing mm-hmm. so the first thing is for people to try as much as possible to expose themselves mm-hmm. to knowledge to experiences mm-hmm. to places to people mm-hmm. that way you will start seeing life not just from your own perspective mm-hmm. and lenses and background mm-hmm. but you start realizing ah okay so kumbe masomo to see your masomo yeah yeah you know when i was growing up i you know i remember i didn't know that there was anything called private and public school because si si shule zilikuwa za gava yes yes hey, so kwani kuna shule zingine tini private mm. ati watu wanavaa sijitroza yeah, nini viatu yeah, that yes, kind of thing yeah. you know and people walk to school right so that was my environment mm-hmm. the head teacher alikuwa na, na bike hizi za black mamba mm-hmm. you know so you mm-hmm. can imagine that kind of neighborhood where your greatest inspiration ni mse tu wa kawaida so after high school, i mean after primary school kama umemaliza that's yeah. an achievement right eh, madam wakifika class 6 wanaolewa eh, so if you're growing up in that kind of environment mm-hmm. it's very difficult for you to realize that there's something beyond that mm-hmm. so it takes exposure and for me uh, what helped was when i joined high school i was transitioned from the village mm-hmm. i found myself somewhere in kiambu <laughs> Ooh, okay yeah that's exposure so you kiambu <laughs> Miss Jess Kia msia kiongea any other language apart from Swahili, mm. English and now my mother tongue Luya. Mm. I've never heard anything else. Yeah. So I'm here eh wasi wana bonga kisapo leo na shindo hii gani. So so wapi hapa hivi ni niko wapi? It's ah man that's it's profound man so umeanza shake conversation because it's something also nearly realized with time I struggled with uh, speaking out speaking my opinions mm-hmm. and i remember uh, when we got our daughter one of the first things my mom told me lali kuja kuona tu mtu hii mtu hii akilia of course naturally mtu hii akilia unataka hiyo kitu nyamasa unajua tu watu wanaweza kutizisha Uh, and so as a parent you either try to mimic the child ndio anyamaze or try yeah. to find ways za kunyamazisha yeah. mtu hii one of the things my mom told me is watch am mtoto alie that's their first language mm-hmm. they have no other language so let your kid cry let your kid throw tantrums yeah. because that is how she's learning or he is learning to speak out mm-hmm. and you know it's something we we you know we took notice of and to kaendelea and it's true my my daughter is turning four and she speaks out Yeah, I do But in Wanchi fact sometimes I want to be like her like yeah, yeah kama kitu <laughs> itajamzaz atasema. Yeah. You know. So and, and just observing her na sisi ni watu to ligro. I keep saying we had preventative beatings. Mtu wangu ulikuwa unapigwa before uinge supermarket. Na tukiingia huko usijaribu kuchukua kitu. Unapigwa kwa ile makosa utalikely to 
<laughs> you know, so small things, man. That's yeah. that's amazing. Um, so the, you know the inspiring stories that and life changing stories that you fit on uh, shared moments of justice. Yeah. Indo ina kwanga swali ya ah how guest una watu wanga wapi <laughs> eh bana Judas kizangezi story niko eh eh just wali pataje umse wow. mm. <sighs> tukianza yeah because the idea was just in my head yes so it was very difficult to mm. you know as you know when you're beginning yeah. to convince people that mm-hmm. whatever is in your head is actually something that should come out of your head mm-hmm. <laughs> so when i shared with a few people right. you know, friends friends family mm-hmm. um of course it was not very clear yeah. to most people but in my head i had this you know perfect mm-hmm. concept idea mm-hmm. and what i wanted to do was very clear mm-hmm. um beginning was the issue so mm-hmm. i tried to reach out within my network mm-hmm. i i love people yeah so, yeah so most cases you will find me you know in a group of people mm-hmm. so i already had quite a huge network even before uh, yeah. starting the channel mm-hmm. and said i know a few people within my network who have very great stories mm-hmm. but they have never gathered the courage to share them publicly right and yet these are stories that i know if shared would really impact other people mm-hmm. because there are people who are seated somewhere imagining that they are going through so much mm-hmm. simply because they have not heard a story of someone else going through more than what they are going through mm-hmm. so by giving them an opportunity to listen to someone else's story mm-hmm. you're empowering them mm-hmm. you're waking them up mm-hmm. and helping them to stand and start you know chasing mm-hmm. life mm-hmm. so i just went within my network and uh, tapped a few guys and told them by the way uh, your story belongs to a space where people can have access to it mm-hmm. uh, most most of them turned me down and they're like nah nah which i respectfully accepted but the first person i actually reached out like i said in the beginning was yeah. this lady who yeah. i had met at langata women's prison, prison in yeah. 2010 10 yeah and uh, for her she was more than willing mm. i was like i want to do a follow up of your story yeah i don't know where i'm going to take it because at the time i had not created the space the platform mm-hmm. but i just want to do it because i know it would really inspire a lot of people yeah so i reached out she accepted i recorded that story wow without knowing where i was going to post it mm-hmm. and then i said if i'm to post it somewhere i need another story mm-hmm. and i reached out to another uh, lady friend of mine yeah within my network who also had a very powerful story mm-hmm. and i managed to convince mm-hmm. her to actually mm-hmm. come and talk about yeah. her experience she she accepted so i had these two stories when i began and shared after i shared the two stories i didn't have any other story to share <laughs> <laughs> content division <laughs> so, channel imeanza but the channel imeanza but hakuna content yeah so and every time you try to convince someone to come and share like because uh, mm-hmm. it was a new thing yeah and also the style that i use where ni wewe tu ndio kwa kwa show so it took time <laughs> it took time yeah uh, at least with the two stories zikaenda yeah. but no much viewership mm-hmm. you no know, mm-hmm. but i consistently reached out within my network for yeah. the first four five stories mm-hmm. after they started at least people started watching it mm-hmm. was now much easier mm-hmm. for me to call someone who i don't know Yeah. and make reference to a story i have posted mm-hmm. that i want you, i want us to do something like this, this so yes. i had some reference yeah. and that's why it's very important for people to begin because mm-hmm. if you don't begin mm-hmm. then you have no reference <coughs> so me beginning mm-hmm. created an opportunity for me to reach out to more right. people yeah. and tell them without using a lot of words what i want yeah. to do by just pointing them to the videos mm-hmm. i had already recorded true right now it's much easier because people are reaching out with their stories i mm-hmm. don't have to struggle to reach out of course yeah. i still reach out because i yeah. i have specific things i want to also mm-hmm. address mm-hmm. but people are reaching out more right. than i'm reaching wow. and you said where do i find these people or yeah. this story yeah um i think that question is because most of these stories sound like they're not real They're out of this world like but they say <laughs> life is stranger than fiction man True exactly. life is yeah and i tell people the guy seated next to you has an experience you've never had and you might never hear for the rest of your life that is true. but if you create an environment that will allow him to share it vulnerably mm-hmm. you'll be you you'll be surprised of what a story what a human being that is
So for me, that was the focus. Mm. Not necessarily to look for stories, mm. but to create a space where people will feel vulnerable enough to be able to share without judgment. Mm -hmm. And that space has time and again continued to attract people. It is wow. the space. We will definitely get to your story. I hope I have created the right space <laughs> and environment to tafika kwa story yako. Um, I got to know of your channel, um, was it end of last year or beginning of this year? So there's a show we are working. Yeah. Uh, we are pro currently producing. And so we do a lot of research, a lot of research. And the show rev revolves around church, you know, the new age cult church, yeah. is, and it revolves around drugs as well. So I watched two videos on your channel. So we, we usually have a think tank, we call it the Fill It Think Tank. And this is just a team of writers and directors and producers. Yeah. And we go away for like a week just to research and write stories. And so during that week, we also consume a lot of content in, uh, in, in, in research mode. So I watched a story, uh, there was a lady who was married to a pastor <laughs> Nilikuwa na stories za partner A and partner B. Umeikumbuka? Nimeikumbuka. <laughs> wait, 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 because we, we are really modeling uh, the, 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 the story around such churches. Right. You remember the story? I remember the story. Yeah. What, yeah. what was her name? Because uh, <laughs> she's, she's on the channel. Yes. Yes. Her, her name is, uh, where is the name going now that you asked? <laughs> it's Okay. Martha, 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 Martha Rena. Yes. Oh Martha my goodness. Rena. And then there was a gentleman who talked about his struggle with alcohol, mm. and he came from a well-off family. And Solomon Kilanga. Yes, yes. Ended up on the streets, man. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that that's when I started paying attention to you to your channel. So Manze, first of all, thank you. <laughs> You've really you don't know what you do for us out wow. here. You we we now use you your channel as a research tool, wow. as a way. And, and so I'm curious, when you share these stories, mm. what's the desired effect that you're looking for? What's the impact you want to achieve with these stories, by sharing these stories? One of the things that I have uh, intentionally pushed myself to doing is uh, to creating people or bringing out the best in people. Mm -hmm. All these people who come to share their experiences, some of them pretty broken, I want to empower them mm -hmm. so that after sharing their story, it's not just about the views and those who would benefit by watching, mm -hmm. but for them mm -hmm. to be better people that after sharing, they are empowered to actually face life and become centers of influence in themselves. I'm sure if I was to do this job by myself in the you know space I have as shared moments with justice, I can only reach a few people. Yes. But if I empower each of these people who come through this platform to create shared moments, their own shared moments mm -hmm. in their own centers and spaces of influence, mm -hmm. then I would have achieved the first thing, the mm -hmm. first objective. Right. Number two, I want to change people's narratives. So that when one year from the time you have shared your story, mm -hmm. when you look back, you say, I'm grateful I shared that story because mm -hmm. I'm no longer the story I shared. Mm -hmm. My story has moved from here. Mm -hmm. I have a new story now. Yeah. I'm here because right. I came out. I opened up. Mm -hmm. And through opening up, I have found myself in a community. Mm -hmm. One of the things I do is I have created a community around shared moments as a family, mm -hmm. people don't just come, share, and go. Mm -hmm. when, when you come, you've just subscribed yourself to a new family. Yeah. And we have a community of everyone who has ever shared their story. They are in one pool. Mm -hmm. These people are a resource in themselves. Right. Meaning that if you are lacking in one thing, you'll find someone who has, that is their strong mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And so just within themselves, they are able to tap into each other's resourcefulness mm -hmm. and they become an asset mm -hmm. and an army. You know, so that's another thing, a community that we mm -hmm. have been able to create. Right. And more often than not, we actually even have programs and activities that bring them together mm -hmm. to just celebrate and have a good time and, ex you know, look at the good, the good you know, side of life. Right. 
And then, of course, the other thing that uh, I want to do or to achieve uh, through this platform is to create a space that can outlive me. You know, it's not about me. And that's why, you know, you said it and when we were beginning, tuneza pitana na usijue niko wapi kwa hiyo crowd. Yes, because yes. when I was beginning, it was not about me. Mm -hmm. I was creating a space that outlives me. A yeah. space that when you're watching, you're watching story ya mm -hmm. uyo mtu. Yes, yes, I'm there and everything in the mm -hmm. background, but mm -hmm. it's not about me. Mm -hmm. So I want to create a, a space that will be able to serve generations even when I exit, because right. at some point I will. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I want the childhood that I missed. I want that child whose voice was curtailed, whose voice was you know, taken away when growing up. I want that child to experience what it means to have a voice. So I want to give people back their voice. I want people to be able to stand out and represent themselves and say what they have to say because it's only through having a voice that you can be able to do so much. Yeah. What you do carries a lot of responsibility because one, um, to us, the audience, you owe us at least um, that the stories are genuine, you know. Right. This is your story, is a job. Mm. <laughs> or a job. Uh, and number two, a responsibility to the people that have trusted you with this story and this. Yeah. Um, so how, I, I don't even know how to phrase this question, but it's an immense responsibility. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how have you crafted that? The stories I'm getting are genuine. People are not using your yes. platform yes. to bash other people. Yeah. So like, how do you confirm the stories are genuine, number one? And how do you protect the people that share their stories after? Because, mm. we, mm. you know, people are going to come after sure, you sometimes sure. when you share certain stories. Yeah. Mm. I think that's a very good uh, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, and I, th I really thought about it before mm. I even began. Mm -hmm. Considering you're a journalist, so <laughs> journalistic <laughs> ethics how, how to eh, apply. Kabisa. Yeah. You know, so especially being able to ascertain that uh, history um to anasema ni genuine amanini. So we we don't just, you know, wezi tu sema ni kona story alafu na mwambia akuja, sema. Especially if your story touches on third parties. Yeah. Other yeah. people. Yes. You're yes. mentioning other people in your story. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, and it's unethical <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to yeah, just allow absolutely. people to malign others' names and to just say things that are can't can't be substantiated. Mm -hmm. And you because you have a space, you want to just use that to you know number for numbers and, and traction and that kind of thing. Right. So that for me, of course, is a very serious thing. Mm -hmm. And so what we do, we have a team that receives all these requests that are come through that that are coming through right unless it's a story sisi when you to reach out mm -hmm. so kuna zile story watu wanatuma requests i have a story of this kind mm -hmm. so our team is able to uh, you know establish the contact with the person who wants to share their story and the stories that require more follow up in terms of kama unasema nilikuwa mgonjwa for this long do you have any documents that really prove that you are in hospital this period that you are mentioning yeah. or you are in prison at this time mm -hmm. or you know so that team is able to do the background checks so okay. that by the time we are actually saying we are considering doing your story mm -hmm. we've done all the background checks okay and then um, where we need you to bring even physically some of the documents or you know things that would help us you know, mm -hmm. be safe. Yeah, we we do that. All right. And then, um, of course, mtu akikuja. Once you have shared your story, or before you share your story, we 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 ask you to also give us the permission <laughs> to 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 air the story. Of course. So you yeah. have to sign um, mm -hmm. image release yeah. or consent form. Right. So that uskuja up one year down the line, I mean, I never allowed you guys to share this true, story. True. So we, we do that also to protect ourselves from people who can be malicious. Mm -hmm. Because we've had people before, by mm -hmm. the way, now that you mentioned, yeah. uh, very few percentage, maybe mm -hmm. 1%. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had an experience where someone reached out mm -hmm. after um, 
you know we had done the story imeshaenda mm-hmm. na ni story yenye mimi si wewe ndio ulikuja <laughs> true and then so people look at the views viewership sometimes because the motive was not right yeah anaona ni kama ah you guys mna mcdona story yangu Mm. Eh, his views zimekuwa mingi sana yeah. and there was at, i think at some point someone lied to Kenyans that uh, the number of views was equivalent But. to the amount of money someone was you know making from that story yeah so the lady came out and she was like i want a share of the money that you made from my story so i just told her of course genuinely how the thing works yeah and um, the fact that even if we are making some money from this story which is true youtube you know revenue mm. and that, that kind of thing yeah it's only enough to facilitate the amount of you know investment we've also put in yeah and we are trying to create a space that can be able to it's, it's more than just money for mm. us yeah but of course people might not be able to understand if the motive is wrong so mm. what saved us was the fact that we had an agreement before she gave her story right because she went to the extent of uh, reporting even to youtube so that they can bring down the channel ah <laughs> so youtube reached out and they're like we've received this complaint uh, but we're giving you uh, a week to mm-hmm. respond yeah so that we can know the next course of action so i submitted all the documents and you know so mm. they were able to ascertain that no that was just someone who was being malicious right and uh, you know so things were cool Oof. <clears throat> wow <laughs> um but you listen to a lot of stories so uh is there a story that has had a profound effect on you <laughs> yourself <laughs> maybe okay the audience is wide so kila mtu yeah. abe affect you but could a story hata wewe ulisikia ukatoka hapo ukajiita kama mkutano pale nje ukasema we we bado nasema tu hivyo we bado unasema hivyo yeah si story moja mhm kuna story mingi sana yani but of course mm-hmm. every story there's something that there's something that every story has on me that is different from the other story mm-hmm. kuna story yenye you know mpaka una develop personal attachment nayo you know when even when you about to air that story you're yeah. wishing that <coughs> see what we watch is story yeah unfortunately that's not how you know the <laughs> <It> story works <laughs> <laughs> that is true that is true zile stories zenye unataka watu wa watch unajipata eh ni wase tu you know ni wewe na wase wachache wame watch but even then what i've noticed is the story somehow always gets to the right audience mm-hmm. so unapata story yenye ulikuwa unataka ifikie you know a million people yeah. only you know 5000 people have watched mm-hmm. but within the 5000 the impact has been felt let me give you a, an example there's a, there's a lady who i did her story i think back in 2021 and you know she's um, i mean that that woman is just strong she has a child with the cp but she's one people she's she's one person who does not just, just sit and you know cry over things and all yeah. that so yeah. i did her story and this is one story i really want her name is beatrice i really wanted this story to really go so that people mm. can connect with her yeah. and be able to you know support and just come through right but the story didn't do that well mm-hmm. But the few people who watched that story have changed that woman's life. Wow. Her life has literally changed and we'll be having an event this coming December. Mm-hmm. Uh, this the, yeah on the 1st of December. Right. And those are some of the things that we celebrate looking back to how the lives of these people has been changed mm-hmm. and she'll be there sharing that experience of what exactly has happened since she shared that story. But you asked the stories that have impacted me mm-hmm. personally not yeah. other people yeah so that is one story mm-hmm. that uh, really was at the you know yeah i i really felt it mm-hmm. but the story of solomon kilanga you mentioned yes, yes. <laughs> that was one powerful story that right. you know talked to a lot of things this in, including you know childhood uh, yeah. traumas and Absolutely. the things that we take for granted <laughs> yeah and there's one story i did recently um of um, a lady called Elizabeth mm-hmm. who has been through 
a horrific, horrific, abusive marriage. Okay. She has gone through what you wouldn't even wish your worst enemy to go through. And when I was interviewing her and listening to her tell her story, she gives you one experience and you're like, no, that, that's too much. And then the next. Another one. And then the next. <clears throat> and you're like, how much can one person take? Take, yeah. But the fact that you're here to even talk about it with grace in itself yeah. is just beyond this world. So these stories impact me differently. And of course, one thing that uh, perhaps many people also ask is, are you, are you okay? <laughs> that was my next question. That was actually my next question. I wanted to know, so how okay? do you decompress from this? In yeah. our world, we call it de-rolling. Yes. <laughs> when you play a role and it affects you, yeah. and then now you have to get out of that mm -hmm. role. Yeah. Because, hey, the stories you listen to, mm. I mean, after the, listening to that many stories, I wouldn't trust human beings at all, yeah. you know. Yeah. So how do you decompress, de-roll? <laughs> It's not, it's not easy mm -hmm. because when you're doing these stories, you can't necessarily detach yourself. Oh, I mean, a journalist, Najua, if I were part of the story and mm -hmm. all that kind of thing, mm -hmm. not in this space. No. In this space, you have to be part of the story. The, the emotions mm -hmm. that come with it demand that you have to be part of the story if you're going to carve a successful outcome. Yeah. from this person. You mm -hmm. have to connect with their journey. Mm -hmm. Let me give you, um, uh, tell you something about how, when I was beginning. The first year and a half of Shared Moments with Justice, yeah. I was recording from my house. I didn't have a studio space. Yes. Recording from my house, strangers, people who I hardly knew, mm. people I was some meeting for the first time, Yeah. Some, you know, I remember at some point, you know, you have a guest with a very good story mm -hmm. and they are telling you, I live in Kisi. And you're like, okay, this thing is self-sponsored. How am I even, so you have to facilitate yeah. their transport. Mm -hmm. They come, mm -hmm. but where are they coming? I can't even afford a hotel mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. And it's COVID time. People, I mean, we are all struggling. Mm -hmm. So where are they going to sleep? Your house. In my house. This is the same house. We are sharing with the rest of the family. The kids are here. So when I want to shoot, I have to create a set. Within a, the house. Within the house. Yeah. And after shoot, you bring down everything. So you have to get yourself to connect yourself to where you want to go. But I'm doing it knowing that this is, this is not an end. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to create something that I know will grow and outgrow all these challenges and space. And for sure, right now we are... No longer in the house. Yeah. But those stories that we did mm -hmm. still ring, you know. Mm -hmm. So protecting myself, really, one is to have regular debriefs. Mm -hmm. So as a team, mm -hmm. we usually meet so often. Okay. And to just talk about the stories, what we liked about the story, what we didn't like, what we had personal connection with, and yeah. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that really helps. Mm -hmm you know, our team to just come to terms with things. But we've also, um, within our network, we have um, therapists and okay. we have partnered with, uh, you know, organizations that deal with mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is called Psychex, mm -hmm. who have come on board really handy and they are just a call away. If right. any of us needs any of the services, then they are able to, to come in. Okay. Uh, but I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> wow. It's okay. We, we, we're trying a day at a time. Yeah. And so you can't just say that, mm. no, no, but of course you also have to find a way to, you know, be above ground. Right. Because if I collapse mentally, then it means I can't be able to support anyone else. That is So true. I have to shield myself also. Mm -hmm. from unnecessary filtration, mm -hmm. especially because when you're dealing with wounded people, then they, they have a way of also um, attaching. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're giving someone a platform that they have never had all their life. That they have true. just rediscovered themselves. They yeah. don't want to go. Oh, yes. 
this is home this for is them. home that's true so you have to also create boundaries mm-hmm. that will help you remain focused and do the work mm-hmm. and make it very clear that when i place these boundaries mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that i no longer want to associate with you mm-hmm. or i don't want to i don't have time for you yeah you just have to understand these are the dynamics mm-hmm. within this space we, that i'm operating mm-hmm. if i don't do this then i'll not help the next person that is true yeah Oof. So okay. <laughs> I mean to to be honest about shared moments with justice. Uh but you've mentioned about having a team. How big is your team? Right now we have a team of about uh seven, no, eight. <laughs> wow. Yeah, eight. Oof. Um now I'm curious now how you've <laughs> turned this passion yeah. into I don't to call it a business but you an know an enterprise an enterprise yeah. that can support eight people yeah yeah and and how have you used this platform now to grow your own uh business mm-hmm. which is running a production company yes yeah. yes so I've been doing production for you know actively since 2014 mm-hmm. so mostly documentary work mm-hmm. And uh, so it was not very easy for me to figure out a lot of things when I I came into the digital mm-hmm. space. Yeah. But the digital space has more or less uh given me um an advantage mm-hmm. in terms of uh, visibility. Right. And just marketing yourself and the work that you do. Right. So I'm able to attract more uh you know clients mm-hmm. because of the digital space and the visibility that it gives me. Yeah. Which most of it might, might not necessarily be even related to shared moments yes yes but now through shared moments your name is my name is out there yeah. people have seen the quality of work yes, and yes. they are able to associate and say can you do something like this for our organization for my company you know so that team works not just for shared moments mm-hmm. but for the bigger smartage media right. that's the brand Yeah. So they work for the Smartage Media and we are able to now get more clients as a result of that visibility. Mm-hmm. But also in more intentionally we have uh gone out of our way to even just share moments as as mm-hmm. an entity mm-hmm. to try and make it self-reliant mm. so that uh, it doesn't have to get resources from these other part of the need to to bring here. Yeah. And uh people think uh, when you talk of youtube for instance mm-hmm. that the money is in the ad revenue uh, the money is not in the ad revenue, revenue nope. but <laughs> the money is in the network and the connection that you know that space or platform gives you absolutely yeah absolutely. so just being able to um, reach out to people who can be able to partner mm-hmm. especially in events yeah that we usually have we have had a strong partner through the Kenya Human Rights Commission okay you know so you find that they facilitate and fund some of those uh, initiatives right and we'll talk about the upcoming one yes yes absolutely and uh, so and just having people who are able to place their products mm-hmm. on your content but that's a very risky and sensitive <laughs> one yeah on what product you place on your brand yes yes because your mm. stories are very sensitive It's very sensitive yeah and when we began the first two years i said i was not going to put any brand mm-hmm. on any external brand mm-hmm. on the platform right because i wanted to first create the brand to have its own identity mm. For, sure. for two years for sure no advert no nothing wow so that people can associate and relate that brand for what it is because it was too early for me i felt mm-hmm. to introduce other brands because then they would come with their own you know yeah, for yeah. Sure. and for some sure. of those brands can really dilute your brand <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely <laughs> you know? and i feel like uh, youtube has done that for a lot of content creators because mm. before in the traditional media you really had a lot of you know stoppages and blockages yes, do yes. this don't do this yeah. say this don't say this uh but with youtube we are able to be very very authentic mm. you know even how we run this conversation yeah. see my story to napi eh zamani inge kwa very detailed and structured <laughs> yeah and uh, it's i see real manzi what want to associate na watu kwa wao mtu mwenye ako na flaws Yes. People want what what has made this story is actually by the very impactful mm-hmm. is because people are able to relate. Mm. They are not fictional. They are yeah. pe- their stories like 
mtu anaona eh after someone has, has watched the story they're like they are seeing themselves mm-hmm. i've had feedback where mm-hmm. people are saying i'm 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 truly grateful for that opportunity to watch that story because mm-hmm. i felt like finally i was i was speaking yeah i was talking i, I was seen yeah. somebody was that yeah. story is that is me that is, yeah <laughs> you know? and you don't know what that does to that person wow so man classmate ceo cop with your um what he's doing what i'm doing we actually use content creation to market ourselves i think right now in the age and generation we are living in the world we are living in content creation for me is marketing 101 like mm. you just have to get up and start creating content for what you do whatever yeah. business it is because why i shoot the way i shoot the quality is because my world is content you know mm-hmm. video production yes <laughs> so i need to show people what i can do right and and i'm happy that I've had a few clients reach out and they're telling me Phil I want you to come and produce a podcast for us we love the quality that you you've done so please is it possible to do this yeah so techno techno is using that very same style you know, um so we we in a space where people like you and I are being pushed out to the limelight mm. we are used to being behind the camera yeah. and a lot of Uh, team leaders ceos at jazoya limelight but we are living in a world look at elon musk zuckerberg um uh it's like the audience out there the the people who consume our products and services are really like we want to know the person behind a company so you come to feel like you sana cuz why are you seated here mtiangu <laughs> shared moments with just as at onangi just as yeah. but i would be it, comfortably behind you know yeah. in the the scenes right. making sure that uh, everyone else is comfortable is okay. and and do you think this is the new way of doing business where you have to attach your face to the product that you that you that you sell that you out there marketing i i don't think it's a choice because at some point of course you know different times for different products and different people mm-hmm. you know <clears throat> but the dynamics currently uh, have changed yeah. in such a way that people don't just consume products mm-hmm. but they consume um, even the source of the product <laughs> Yeah, or the yeah. people that associate themselves with the product. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That is true. So, um people want to consume X or former Twitter, Twitter. Yeah. because of Elon Musk. Right. So they are consuming Elon Musk, mm-hmm. not necessarily Twitter. Mm-hmm. So whatever Elon Musk represents or stands for. Yeah. That is what people are looking for and are right. interested in. Right. if he represents liberation mm-hmm. you know then they want to associate even more yeah. and consume anything that mm-hmm. he is associated with right so it means then in our case these brands that we want to push mm-hmm. they are not just happening in isolation Mm-mm. we are in the mix and yeah. so our values whatever we represent and stand for mm-hmm. is on the line right long gone are the days when you can just push a brand and you know go on the other side and do other things mm. people, people will stop consuming it hey, look no exception <laughs> I, i don't to meet like who is the ceo of arimis <laughs> whoever you are please come to this show that's a brand i'm interested ama chapa mandash ili ileto chapa mandash you making powder eh nataka kujua na in the ceo man those those are the lucky few but yes, yes continue yeah but generally you find that people now want to because i mean the world has been compressed it's mm. you know it's a global village right. so people are more interested in personal lives and things that you know people are doing yeah. and so i think it's inevitable as a leader you have to say what you mean and mean what you say because mm. it will come to, it will count for something yeah. and someone will use it uh, when it matters most mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to bring down a brand that you have right. built for you know years mm-hmm. we've seen that especially in in america and europe mm-hmm. where people you know leaders have been brought down by scandals that mm-hmm. have nothing to do with yeah. their assignment yeah. <laughs> you know that's true so there's that but the other thing i think which is also key is sometimes as a leader you're pushing for a certain identity but because you're not in the picture 
Mm-hmm. That identity is getting lost between yourself and the consumer. So what the consumer is receiving as your identity is, is not the true identity because there are so many other gatekeepers mm-hmm. and middlemen, people mm-hmm. in between that are not articulating the ideal brand mm-hmm. identity that you represent. Yeah. So at some point, it's important for you to come out strongly and uh, show what exactly you mean and you stand for. Mm-hmm. So once that is done, then people are able to say, ah, kama kiongozi ya mesema ivo, yeah. then we can ignore all these other voices. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. You're the vision bearer, so you have to go out there and sell your vision. Yes. And no one will sell your vision better mm-hmm. than you. Yeah. But it's also not to say that everyone must be on camera. <laughs> yeah. 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 True, you know? true, true. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. There are people who generally also have weaknesses mm. that uh, might, you know, might work, you know, to the disadvantage of the brand if they are given certain roles. Yeah. So nivizuri pia kujitambua yeah. and know what you're good at mm-hmm. and capitalize on that. Right. And also work in a team. So yeah. if you have a team and you realize that <clears throat> this person can do so much here, mm-hmm. empower them to do that. Don't be awesome. insecure and you know micromanage people and you want to do everything because you're right. the lead. I mean, there are, there are certain uh, business moguls who, who, who are good at that. Um, and I envy them because social media is hard for me. Yeah. You know, I've said this many times. You have someone like Jay Z. Sorry, I'm a hip hop fan. <laughs> Jay Z, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. These are people who will post once in every four years, but mm-hmm. <laughs> you know their brand is still out there. And I think yeah. they've done what you've just said. They've just gotten a team. Because if you go online, you will always see a Kendrick or Jay Z conversation post yeah. somewhere. I think they have a big PR team doing They're that. Mastered. Yeah, just to keep that name up there. So, that, man, that's yeah. amazing. You do a lot of stories to inspire us, to teach us, to keep us motivated. Mm. So, what inspires you? What keeps you motivated? I, what keeps you going? Juni koshua kuna siku na mkango ko ama hii studio tu ni funge ni rudi ushago ni lale tu. Hey, especially kuna time yenye bills zina kamu na shindua, is this thing worth it? Yeah. You know. Yeah. But me upata inspiration from different sources. Mm. One is just the family, uh, mm. my family itself. Yeah. The fact that I have got a lot of support from within my mm. family mm-hmm. in itself in and keep going. Mm-hmm. Like kama hawa watu wote wame believe, kama hawa watu not wa, not hawa watu wote, but kama hawa watu wenye you yeah. know wako this close mm-hmm. wanaamini he dream Mm-hmm. then I have no reason to, you know, right. uh, to rest. So <clears throat> I, I draw a lot of inspiration and support from my family. Mm-hmm. And uh, looking at uh, my kids, Nashindua, eh, sasa, nikiacha leo. I laugh. Ah, see one end up. I laugh. Awa jajitambua. You know, mm-hmm. they're not at a stage where you can now say, no, they will figure out life. No, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you have to figure out life for them. Yeah. Sio kuangalia waanze kusema zile story tunasema at eh babu zetu walikuwa wapi wa 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 true. Eh. That's true. So we don't want that narrative to be repeated. Yeah. And that means that that only means that we have to, you know, keep pushing and keep going. Mm-hmm. But of course I'm also um, a spiritual person. Mm-hmm. So the space for God in my heart is very big. And so that way I'm able to see hope. Mm-hmm. Even in places where people see hopelessness, yeah. I'm able to see, you know, potential in people who the world has given up on. Mm-hmm. I'm able to, you know, cast uh, visions beyond the material, you know, ability and mm-hmm. the things that I have around me. Mm-hmm. So God has helped me to realize that I can only limit myself if I limit what he can do through me. Mm-hmm. So I'm motivated every day. And for me, life is easy. I don't stress over things that I can't change. Yeah. And I'm easy. Easy. I enjoy life. Right. I, I love football. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> the next question, it will determine how my conversation is. Hey, yes. We, una support team lose gani, my fans up as I eat. Una, una, oh, una support oh, oh, team oh, oh, oh. gani. Man City. <laughs> Wapi wasio Man City ba? Ah ni watoto wa nini bana. Ah ni watoto wameanza kuona mpira 2020. Hakuna bana. 
tumekuanga tu uko by the way at some point i think i was the only man city fan in kenya <laughs> Mko wili so alafu na mdomo. Eh, Sasa hizi ndio si tuko tu na ma strangers hawa sikao umetoka hizi team zingine za kondogo hizi zimepigwa pigwa juzi sijui Arsenal sijui mani hizo team tu but to say mention hapa. Si mzime hiyo kama. Tunaweza lose nini? Nini? Hapa na u. Kisema team dogo tunaongea jamani hiyo. Kuna there's something I've, I'm always curious about because as a content creator whether I'm doing a TV show a film a documentary what we are doing here uh, is the element of entertainment because at the end of the day it's content it's mm. supposed to be entertaining mm. and entertaining when people hear entertainment they think it's just fun and yeah. no 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 just entertaining that means you can keep me glued to your story mm. how have you been able to crack that because one you get to impress na na your channel yeah. camera it's on one person mm. the entire time for one hour yeah. na sita toka hapo na kuna b rolls na kuna b rolls <laughs> and b rolls ni katawe of different um, uh, different shots yeah. so you know one it's educating but it's entertaining at the same time how have you been able to do that it's it's a lot of things mm-hmm. into one mm-hmm. and every time someone comes mm-hmm. they want to unaweza kuna mtu akona story poor sana yes but i easy tell Uh, yeah they are not a good in a narrator way that is captivating yeah. that is true so one of the things that i do mm-hmm. before that show that you see yeah. i have a crush program mm-hmm. with every guest and i help them on how to tell a story and tell it well you <laughs> cousin because i i know how much i struggle and i'm working with actors yeah. but sometimes i do get new actors who can't really tell that you yes. know so now I'm here you're working these are not even actors yeah they are not even yeah. actors these are real life people yeah. some of them have never even been in front of a camera but it's not as complicated by okay. the way yeah. especially when you're in the real world yeah. it's more difficult for actors okay <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah because one thing i tell them mm-hmm. is just be yourself that's mm-hmm. where it starts you have to be yourself don't right. try to imitate or you know sound like someone else mm-hmm. there's no script don't don't even think about the other stories we have done and mm-hmm. you want to sound like you know mm-hmm. the other guy who was here right. your story is unique mm-hmm. and we want to see that uniqueness people are here for you mm-hmm. not the other story true that's number one. <clears throat> number two, given that our main outlet is digital platform mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. people have no time for those lengthy conversations and that kind of thing so mm-hmm. how do you make sure someone sits and watches a one hour long you know mm-hmm. production yeah how you begin the first 30 seconds will yeah, determine whether i'm going to watch the rest of the video or not that's true so that's one thing we are very intentional about mm-hmm. and i help my you know uh, storytellers and my guests mm-hmm. to crack it in such a way that we do an intro mm-hmm. that will excite our audience and make them want more that is true you know That's but true. we do that intro at the end yeah, yeah. after you have told your story mm-hmm. because at the beginning people are still edgy and you know mm-hmm. fidgety mm-hmm. so we allow you to first tell your story right. and then now reflect back mm-hmm. this story that you have told yeah. if you met me for just and you only have one minute with mm-hmm. me and i'm this you know influential guy that needs yeah. to hear that story right <clears throat> what what would you tell me that is a summary of your story mm-hmm. that would want me to postpone everything else i was going to and listen to you wow. it doesn't come easy but we try do several oh, takes and then I, I use the same exact formula it's only that now for me what i do is i'll now edit the the interesting bits of yes. this conversation yes. and put it as the first as, th- yeah. first minute that's another way of doing it yeah and yes. so that oh man that's amazing yeah hey. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's art it's mm. art so mm-hmm. you can't just get lost in mm. the fact that ah sit not tell stories the no, story no, story no. watch i end no no, no if you are competing mm. with all these other voices yeah then you have to be at the top that's true what will make someone stop at my you know thumbnail mm. and want to watch click on my thumbnail to yeah. watch the next video yeah and not watch anything else that's true so even how you package it the brand mm-hmm. the identity that you give it mm-hmm. the the graphics that you use absolutely on on youtube itself and yeah. these other platforms that mm-hmm. we use you know it has to be attractive absolutely the titles absolutely all those things have a way of you know determining whether you'll get viewers or not 
Okay, yeah. man, that's amazing. And uh, even the... <laughs> so, the <laughs> uh, when I say my <clears throat> sura, like, you know, I'm trying to find uh, <laughs> a good way of putting it. New Kweli. Kuna sura zita attract kwa zingine. New Kweli. Yeah, ukweli. so, tunajaribu hata before shoot, <laughs> pia tunafanya touch-up, kidogo, growing, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Eh, mtu wakae vizuri. Mm. Eh, Musikuwe tu kuna story nzuri, lakini, eh, eh, tunataka tuna kusikiza audio. Yeah, <laughs> that's way, 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 way. Ndugu yeah, kuna kazi. But, kuna, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, Shared moments started off, you know, on YouTube, but it has branched out to do amazing uh, yeah. projects out there. What are some of the <laughs> projects that you involved in, as courtesy of shared moments with yeah. justice? One of our biggest um, initiatives is what we have come to call "Break the Silence." Okay. <clears throat> so, "Break the Silence" mm -hmm. was born out of, uh, of course, the desire to keep creating an enabling environment mm -hmm. for people to talk about the things that matter to them. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. And so we said, it's not just enough to be on YouTube mm -hmm. and all these digital spaces. Mm -hmm. There are people who will never, you know, make it there, right. who will never go to YouTube or to Facebook or TikTok. Mm -hmm. But they have a voice that has been suppressed too. Kuna villagers, palechini, when you not even villagers, you'll be surprised, even here in town, yeah. there are people who hardly, you know, visit those spaces. Mm -hmm. So how do we make sure that our impact is not just digital and that's it, mm -hmm. but we are able to reach people from all, you know, spaces and places. Yeah. So Break the Silence then is our way of reaching out to people and empowering them, giving them tools that will help them to speak and represent the issues within their mm -hmm. areas and, you know, areas of interest. Right. So what we do is we have annual events, mm -hmm. which is the highlight of Break the Silence as a movement. Yeah. Because now it's a movement. Mm -hmm. We have annual events mm -hmm. where, number one, we bring together mm -hmm. every other guest who has ever shared their story mm -hmm. on our platform okay. in one you know, physical location. Right. Because you see, like today I've come here alone. Mm -hmm. The other guests will come, so we never interact physically. Yeah. But the physical touch is very important, mm -hmm. and it opens up your eyes to a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So we have created a physical you know, space where people come in every year Right. To just network yeah. and to be able to remind ourselves of the assignment mm -hmm. of not just, you know, liberating ourselves, mm -hmm. but being the people who are going to help others break their silence mm -hmm. and also celebrating those who have taken the first step of breaking mm -hmm. their own silence, yeah. which are these people now that have hosted. Mm -hmm. So like, for instance, this year we'll have, we'll be having our break the silence initiative event on 1st of December. Okay. And we are inviting not just the guests who we have hosted, mm -hmm. but we are bringing on board all the partners because we are talking about issues on mental health, addiction, and family, and mm -hmm. those kind of things. So all those partners, people who are able to see value in the content that we are sharing, mm -hmm. they come on board. And uh, we are also bringing um, together, uh, what is it called? I just have a, had a mind block. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Don't no worry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but th this is this is a platform that then helps me and the rest of the team mm -hmm. to not just focus on what we are posting online, mm -hmm. but a real impact mm -hmm. on the ground, mm -hmm. empowering people, giving people an opportunity to be able to go and do more from where they are coming from. Right. So that after this event, mm -hmm. people are charged. Yeah. To go out and with very specific mandate right. to go and now break the silence, but help others break the silence. So we, have, we are in the process of creating also, uh, it's, yes, it's physical, but we're in, in the process of creating a website mm -hmm. that will also make it very practical yeah. for peop, voices mm -hmm. in the coast, voices mm -hmm. in Kisumu, voices in Uganda, voices mm -hmm. across the world to right. be represented 
through this break the silence movement mimi ni content creator nime watch the episode manze just as i mean inspire i mean yeah. yani 2020 naweza fungua channel and i can build an enterprise and i'm growing mm. what will you tell this content creator who's about to embark on this journey you have to think about value for your audience I think that's where most people you know <clears throat> are not able to connect. <laughs> so you're wondering why you've been on YouTube or Facebook or all those platforms for you know mm-hmm. a lot of years yeah. and I how you work. Yes. It's because there's no value mm-hmm. for the consumer. Mm-hmm. You're only there to entertain yourself right. and to talk about the things you care about and love mm-hmm. and to portray yourself as the best. Mm-hmm. But there's no value What is it that the person who is watching you at the end of the day akimaliza kuwatch your video? Right. What is the effect? Yeah. Are they feeling like eh yeah I needed this? Mm-hmm. If there's no value, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter which other strategy right. you try to use. Right. Utakuwa tu hapo. That's true. So that's the first thing someone needs to think about mm-hmm. if you want to really break even mm-hmm. in the digital space. Mm-hmm. Must have value for the consumer. <clears throat> Number two, If you want this to be a business, yeah. Then the business principles apply. Mm-hmm. So you can't be running a business emotionally. <laughs> and yeah. just posting when you want to post. It's yeah. like you opening your shop once a week. Wait, 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 and wait. you're expecting that this is a business that is going to grow into, mm. you know, a multinational. No. No, you have to open every week. Consistency. Consistency yeah. is key. Yeah. And then of course team. Mhm you when and team does not necessarily mean people a, ro- a lot of people around mm-hmm. you team speaks to roles mm. when you're talking of a team because you can have 100 people around you yeah. but they are all confused right. not knowing who is doing right. what mm-hmm. so clearly knowing uh, the roles that mm-hmm. you know would really add value mm-hmm. to this particular brand or business mm-hmm. or channel that you are starting yeah. Yeah. So YouTube for instance mm-hmm. now is not just a channel or a platform mm-hmm. it's a business yeah kabisa you know so all those aspects that would inform how you would approach a business mm-hmm. apply right and right now there are a lot of opportunities i think the digital space has opened up because there's i mean competition is there also mm-hmm. and uh, it's to the advantage of the user yeah absolutely you know, a lot of opportunities <clears throat> i think i remember Last year 2022 uh we were um, our, there was this YouTube had rolled out a program called YouTube Black Voices. Yes, yes. And it was it yeah. was you know one of the things that nilisema ah si ni apply to. True. You know si I'm also a creator. Yes, yes. Let me just apply. Yeah. So they were only taking four creators mm-hmm. four YouTubers yeah. from Kenya. I think nine uh Nigeria and mm. 11 in South Africa. Right. Only those three countries were participating. Yes, so yes. I just applied. Nikijua ah hapa si zime. Kwa ni creators wangapi hapa and who are doing much better than I'm doing. Right. So I applied. Mm-hmm. Shock on me. Yeah, I'm told no you are actually you, you are in. Yes, yes, you, you are. You among the four we have selected Absolutely. for the YouTube Black Voices Fund of 2022. I'm yeah, like But you need, you see it couldn't have happened if I didn't attempt. That's true. If I said ah uh-uh, feel 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 like on the numbers mingi kuniliko sasa mimi hata nikiapply sitakuwa considered although hapo youtube ni mimi nanangana kukufikia but so don't be lost <laughs> don't be lost in the numbers game. yes yes you absolutely know, that um, because you have 10 followers then you you allow, allow that to limit what you want to do 10 mm-hmm. followers by mm-hmm. the way are people so look mm-hmm. at it like you are addressing an audience in yeah. a physical gathering right or you actually walking and people are following behind you mm-hmm. you're commanding who is behind you yeah. so you have 10 people following you mm-hmm. that's a, that's not a small number that's true but that's when true. you just look at it as statistics it can dwarf your imagination and think that you're not doing so much yeah so competition is good but no, don't get yourself in an unhealthy competition right. such that it cattails or prevents you from actually doing so much yeah. with the little that is in your hands that is true yeah um this is a question i asked lin gugi because i feel <laughs> I, i see similarities sometimes with yeah. your with your with your channel as well and it's something i'm going to ask you 
of all the stories you've listened to, yeah. all the experiences people have shared with you, is there like a common lesson you've learned? Mm. And, you know, it, it's what you take away from all the stories in uh, on aggregate. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> this is the one thing I've learned about human beings. <laughs> And this is how I'm going to <laughs> think about human beings and this is how I'm going to run my life. Because you've seen the worst of the worst. You've heard, you know, mm. when people are rock bottom, you've yeah. seen their, them getting back up. And of course, the stories that we share are not lest less people associate the channel with the sad stories. <laughs> Unfortunately, those are the ones that go viral. Unfortunately. <laughs> So yeah. we, we, we do stories that are inspirational in nature. Uh, and sometimes we find ins- it, it so happens that yeah. we find most inspiration from those, you know, broken yeah. states of, yeah. of, of life. Mm-hmm. But we have shared equally an, a number of very exciting and, you know, yeah. upbeat uh, yeah, conversations. Serious, I know, I know. <laughs> you know, yeah. but one thing that uh, stands out mm-hmm. in all these, I think, is uh, humanity that there's there's a human being in everyone right. you know there's there's a soul that is vulnerable that is you know yeah. you you just need to spend time mm-hmm. with people mm-hmm. to to appreciate them mm. that what you see on the outside yeah. should not be your final mm-hmm. determinant or determining factor as to who or how you relate mm-hmm. with people so these bodies have gone through so much. Yeah. And sometimes if you want to just use what you are seeing mm-hmm. to determine if you're going to talk to me or if you want to relate with me or if you want to give me an opportunity, then a lot of people will not, you know, will, will be disadvantaged. That's true. So what I've learned is that you need to spend time with people and just allow them to experience you know, mm-hmm. be in an experiential mm-hmm. uh, space yeah. for you don't run into conclusions about mm-hmm. people what you see is not necessarily mm-hmm. what yeah. there is yeah at some point through some training i went through um one of the things i learned is every person that you meet comes with uh, baggage and they come from a certain background mm. and that was profound to me so nowadays when i meet someone before I react to you and I judge you and, yeah. you know, that is, I will always ask, so what's, what baggage are you carrying? Mm. And what was your background like? Yeah. And the minute you start asking yourself that question and try to understand this person, you realize, oh, um, say, hajali puka if you're out of anger yeah. because yeah. he's a bad person. Mm. You know, probably this person didn't eat last night, you know, probably this person is a man frustrated because he can't take care of the family. Mm -hmm. And so from face value, he's erupted a mejam, but man, if you understand where he's coming from, Mm -hmm. he'll be just a little bit kinder to humans, man. That's that's super amazing. And And, 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 and Phil, it's in no way to mean that we should excuse mediocrity and also, you know, just allow people to, Mm -hmm. you know, behave whichever way they want to. Mm -hmm. But just being sensitive helps in making sure sure that uh, you know we we are more accommodative mm. and we don't deny people yeah. an opportunity when they really honestly deserve one I, I, I say um, just a bit of kindness of course human beings will always exploit that but just show yeah. a bit of kindness yeah. and finally just as <laughs> for me to let you go um, what is your moment justice you people share their moments <laughs> with you but have you I don't know if, if if we can summarize or you need another whole hour <laughs> or two, but um, we, we today want Justice to share his moment for the first time. Aye. <laughs> I'm a tough test queen. You know, the problem is mm. uh, sometimes life can um, push you into a space where you even stop mm. looking at yourself. Yeah, you're blind to the things that happening around you mm-hmm. because your focus is somewhere else. Right, you're thinking about other people, mm-hmm. and I think I'm learning now mm-hmm. to be more 
you know, open-minded in a way that okay. I can actually also put me in the picture. Mm. There's, there's a very thin line uh, that, you know, sometimes I can, doing being in the space that I am, mm -hmm. it's very easy for me to lose myself and forget that I also need space, yeah. platform, and, you yeah. know, to just exist mm -hmm. because you're constantly mm -hmm. thinking about the next person right. and helping the previous person yeah. and making sure that everything is set for the other person. Mm -hmm. So when you ask that question, mm -hmm. what's my moment? Mm -hmm. I'm actually thinking about it now. I'm like, okay, so what's my moment? By the way? <laughs> Your story. <laughs> what's, no. what's, what's the moment? No. But I think the summary of it is what I shared at the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, which starts from my childhood mm -hmm. of growing up in that kind of space that mm -hmm. was not conducive for a child. Mm -hmm. As much as, you know, you someone else would want to say, maybe it is what has made me who I am today. Mm. Uh, I think that's yeah. a lazy way of, <laughs> yeah, <it's excusing. laughs> of, of, of yeah. looking at life. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there are good things that happened. I'm not saying entirely that mm -hmm. uh, my childhood was pathetic. No, 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 mm -hmm. no, no. I had family structures and all no, institutions around me that, you mm -hmm. know, helped to shape my values. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, helped me a great deal. But what I'm saying is, my moment is getting back mm -hmm. my lost voice. That is my moment. Okay. Being able to get my lost voice back. As a kid, there was a time, and I've shared this story before. Mm -hmm. There was a time because we, I think, we used to go to church a lot. Mm. So there was a time uh, my grandmother, the, 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 the elders from church had mm. visited. And you know, when visitors come, especially yeah. from church, yeah. uh, there's a way that kids are supposed to behave in that yeah. house. Eh? That is true. Uh, mm. So in uh, Kule Rural, mm -hmm. you know, I think I remember the, the setup in that house. Uh, there was just one uh, long bench bench like seat and so when visitors come first thing even if you're out playing as kids you have to come in yeah so that you can pray together yes. and then when they're about to leave mm -hmm. yeah. that's yeah. the only time to associate now again otherwise you should be out there pl playing mm -hmm. so when these visitors were done and we were called in to have a final prayer so that they can leave mm -hmm. uh we were seated on the floor mm -hmm. all the kids of course yeah we sit yeah. Uh, I remember I was seated next to a, sh a, a, a seat that they, one of the guests was seated on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, wakasema, tusimame, tuombe. Right. <laughs> so, when I was about to stand, mm -hmm. so this guy in the process of standing, mm. aka nikanyaga. So, I'm, I'm about uh, six at the time. Yeah. So, aka nikanyaga kidole on the floor. Na meva kiatu. Yeah. Uh, kubwa. Yeah. The elder. Yeah. So I felt pain that I had never felt, but I couldn't mm -hmm. open my mouth. So when everybody else stood up, of mm -hmm. course, the next thing is, mm -hmm. they are praying, mm -hmm. so you can't interrupt mm -hmm. a prayer. Mm -hmm. Leave alone, at kusema umekanyagwa na yeah. elder wa church. Nilika yeah. And that is the guy who was praying. Akaomba. Akamaliza. <laughs> and I never even told anyone that, you know, the guy was stepping on my mm. fingers yeah. for that long. Mm -hmm. You don't even cry there. So every time I think about that experience, it, it flips me. Mm. I don't want that experience for any other person. Yeah. Leave alone a kid. Speak out. And it has informed even how I relate with my kids. I don't want to make them feel that mm -hmm. there are limitations in terms of, you know, how far someone can go in yeah. expressing themselves. Right. And just sharing what it is that is bothering them. Mm -hmm. We have lost a lot of young people in, in this time and age that we shouldn't have. Yeah. Because we are coming from a background that has clouded mm -hmm. our approach, mm -hmm. our mental space, mm -hmm. our mental health is mm -hmm. terrible because we have been projected 
the traumas that our parents were projected at. And, yeah. you know, we are, unfortunately, the cycle is continuing, but it can end with us. True. I want that cycle to end with me. True. I want me to be the last person to have ever experienced that kind of thing. I want to break the silence. And that is an amazing place to end. Break the silence, speak out. Uh, yeah, speak your mind, speak your truth. Afraid, just speak out. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope you have enjoyed our class today. I hope you've learned a lot from our lecturer of the day, uh, Mr. Justice. Uh, thank you so much for coming through. Uh, come away when you subscribe our uh, Becoming CEO Field Director, please. Head on over to Shared Moments with Justice. Subscribe. Manze pia wajwe CEOs wana watch your channel. Pia kuko uko hivya kwa Shared Moments with Justice. Ruka uko. Kuja kabisa. Kuja uko hivya. Yes. Yes, please. Let's share, man. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Asante. We're still having this conversation at uh, Longonot Place. Uh, an amazing space. Book your staycation. Site kwa your holiday season. Check it out. Book your staycation. Luku kamom ime kubali. It's by Rajab Karume. Check out his space uh, as well. Um yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thanks a lot again and that was amazing to pattern the next class.